Shalom and bracha from Yerushalayim, Yer HaKodesh. We are we are privileged this evening to study together Parashat Pinhas, dealing with one of the great personalities of the Torah, Pinhas ben Elazar. At the end of last week's Torah section, we learned about the zealous action of Pinhas. And through his special dedication, the Torah testifies that God removed the wrath from the Jewish people. But his act was an act which was considered a very harsh form of behavior, where he stabbed and caused the death of two people who were trying to lead the people away from morality and lead them to the depths of spiritual decay. In our parasha, we read about a special covenant, a special gift that God gives Pinhas as a result of his zealous activities. I'm reading from Pasuk Yudbet of our chapter. That's chapter 25, verse 12. Lachain Emor, et briti shalom. God says, I am giving Pinchas my covenant of shalom. Many of the commentaries, and many of the students of Torah, if there's anyone who seemingly was not involved in peace, it's Pinchas. Pinchas, when did he kill people? Is that shalom? We generally think of shalom in, in a different way. We think of shalom as a, in, in a peaceful way, in a calm way. So there are those who suggest that that's precisely the point that he, he is personifying shalom because shalom does not mean that there's never a time to legitimately be involved even in the harshest forms of action. That that's the definition of shalom. And therefore, uh, Pinchas, who was involved in such type of actions, he is the one who receives the covenant of God of peace. But there's another approach, and this approach is discussed in several sources. How is it that Pinchas is the one, of all people, who receives the covenant of shalom? And according to one school of thought, perhaps Hashem is giving Pinchas Briti Shalom precisely to make sure that he doesn't get carried away with this feeling which led him to slay both Zimri Ben Salu and Kozbi Batsur. He needed this covenant of Shalom. He needs this Brit Shalom to balance the act. This was a very, very difficult action. Pinchas comes from the family of Kohanim, the most sensitive people in the world. Pinchas ben Elazar ben Aharon. Aharon is the ultimate peacemaker, the ultimate lover of peace. This is his grandson. Nevertheless, since he was involved in such a harsh action, the Torah wants to temper this and make sure that this has no negative effect on the future of his being. In the language of Rabbi Berlin, because Pinchas soothed the divine anger and wrath, he was blessed with the quality of peacefulness and inner harmony, not to become exacting and irritable, since the nature of his act, killing with his own hand, tends to leave a harsh feeling in the heart. He who acted for the sake of heaven, was granted a blessing to remain gentle and peaceful. And no block shall remain in his heart. In other words, there is a time, perhaps, for the activities such as Pinchas, but God says, remember, the ultimate level is Briti Shalom! Briti Shalom! I want, I'm interested in you developing a sense of, of love, of mercy, of, of, of tranquility. If there are exceptions, and Zimri is an exception, and Kozbi is an exception, and there is room for activities such as Pinchas, as is mentioned here in the Torah, nevertheless, ultimately, I want to work towards this Briti Shalom. And even if we want to suggest that what he did is part of this Shalom, as it says, He shivet chamati me'al b'nei Yisrael. He removed the wrath from the Jewish people. So maybe he was the one who brought around Shalom. It's a very fascinating tradition. I don't know if you can pick it up on, on, with your camera, but in the Torah, on the word shalom, 
See this vav, and the word shalom. This is called a vav kitia. This is in almost every Torah script. A vav generally has to be connected from top to the bottom. In the word shalom, in our text, and you can see it in your Torah text. You see the word shalom. The vav is a vav kitia. It's it's cut off in the middle. It's not a complete vav. Shalom is a, is, is a term that's used many times in our Tanakh. Why is this the, to the shalom with a vav kitia cut off in the middle? I believe the person I heard it from first was someone named Rav David Dov Friedman, Shlita, may Hashem bless him. And it's discussed in several, in several of the sources. Uh, maybe if this is the way you're going to bring about shalom, um, well, maybe there are times where this is necessary, but that's not the ultimate level of shalom that we're striving towards. We want the shalom with the full vav, with Rachel Adachin Noam, the Chalnetim Shalom. Her ways are ways of of pleasantness, and all of her pathways are pathways of Shalom with a full vav. This is, could be Shalom, but it's a Shalom. I don't know Shalom with some kind of broken vav, the broken vav of Shalom. It's there's something broken about this story. It's not a complete story, and therefore, according to the Nitziv and Professor Leibowitz in her Iyunim, <coughs> writes about this at length. Maybe the Torah had to bring, God had to promise Pinchas this shalom to make sure that he doesn't get carried away with these kinds of feelings. And the Nitziv gives another example of this phenomenon in our Torah. There is a section later in the book of Devarim, in the book of Deuteronomy, there's a section in the 13th chapter, in the 13th chapter of Devarim, chapter 13, verse 13. Because of the nature of this city, one of the cities in Israel, and uh, since this city represented the, the opposite of the forces of godliness, one of the harshest pronouncements in the entire, in the entire Torah, there is something along the lines of a description of the total annihilation of that city. The total annihilation it's even difficult to read the word. The whole city is destroyed. Now, the, the saving grace of this is that perhaps there is an approach in the Talmud in Tractate Sanhedrin, <coughs> uh, there is one approach that this is only a theoretical construct. The Gemara says, <coughs> at least according to one, at least according to one school of thought, the Irani Daha, Lo Haita. You know, there was there was never there was never there was never near there was never such a city. So how about Sodom and Gomorrah who were destroyed? Oh, Sodom and Amorah, Even there, perhaps uh, Sodom and Amorah, maybe uh, there were people who were able to survive. Right? Doesn't Lot Lot gets out of Sodom and? You know, I mean, uh, it could be, could be as an example, could be as an example of, uh, of, of of total destruction. But we do see people, uh, you know, being removed from from Saddam, and there it's not an act of, of of people. There it's God who destroys the city, right? In the city of of Irani Dacha, it's not we sit by and we watch the destruction of the city. We are we are instructed to destroy the city. It's different. In Sodom, it's, it's an act of God. In in the thirteenth chapter of the it's an act of, of people. It's, it's very different. There's a fascinating statement at the end of the story, after they destroy the city. I'm reading from chapter thirteen, verse eighteen of uh, of Devarim of Deuteronomy. They, they describe how you destroy the city, how you gather all of the inhabitants and all of the possessions, and you destroy everything. And then it says that God will grant you mercy. rachamim. This is time to speak about compassion. Why specifically here? And in fact, the Gemara says that you know one of the great one of the great traits of the Jewish people is compassion. Where do you learn it from? You learn it from from this pasuk, the verse that's spoken of after after the destruction of the city. It says the Nitziv. Why specifically there? Again, the same idea. That even if people have to be involved sometimes in very harsh actions, it has to be balanced with a certain sense of mercy. The Jewish people are rachamanim. 
The Jewish people are filled with mercy. Where do you learn the source of the mercy? From the very verse that's discussed after the Eir HaNidacha. It has to be balanced. So we pray that this level of Rahmanut should be ever so manifest in the Jewish people that never again should there have to be a destruction of evil, but that all of the evil should be removed through the uh, righteous repentance of all of those people who are not yet connected to piety, and that the studies about Pinahas and Ir Hanidachat remain only studies either of theory or of that which was, and Bezrat Hashem through the great levels of the British Shalom, of the covenant of peace, and the Rachamim, Berichamcha, we will reach a world of perfection where there will be no need for such activities in the future. Thank you so much for listening.